Welcome back to the workshop. Thanks so much for joining us here once again. If you haven't checked out the first in this series of vlog type videos with our new sidekick, please do. Otherwise, stay tuned for the startup. Well, the battery's in. It's uh, taller than I'm comfortable with, but it looks like the hood will close without contacting the terminals. So once we get a, oh, in fact, I was going to say once we get a battery hold down on there, things should be good, but there's a battery hold down back there. So that's cool. I'll put that on in a few minutes. I didn't see it. As you can see, there's a giant rust hole right underneath the battery all the way through the fender, which kind of sucks, but uh, we will deal with it. So pine needles and gross crust everywhere. Time to blow that all out. Motor is all rusty and crusty. Pardon me. I will, um, I will fire it up shortly. We did top up the oil yesterday, so it's fire upable. Uh, it's got water in it, no coolant. Um, we'll have to check on where the coolant went whether it's got a leak or, or what the deal is there. And this is the crusty interior, which Judy has been so kind as to empty out all the junk from. Seats are starting to split in a couple areas, but otherwise they're actually not in terrible shape, really. Mm. Once they get cleaned up, they won't be too bad. Yeah. The plastic is, is all kind of white and gross, but I think, you know, with the with a wash, that should a good scrub should down. Around. Yes, that's it needs that. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, everything seems to function. The seats fold down properly. The seats go back and forth, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, you know, yeah everything so. works actually quite well. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. Yes, yes. So, not a terrible deal. Um, like I said, the, uh, the rear door latch doesn't work. I don't have an ignition key. Um, like I showed you, the screwdriver is the key. So um, we will be replacing the ignition and I'll probably get a hold of a couple of new, either new front doors, which have locks in them, or if I can find just the locks themselves uh, from a, a wrecker or <clears throat> somebody who's parting one out, then that would be great. And then also get a rear door uh, lock from the same vehicle so that I've got a matching key for the ignition, the front doors and the back would be phenomenal. That's the plan. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, for now, why don't we fire this thing up or I'll, I'll blow some... Uh... You want me to hold? Hey? I can hold it while you fire it up. Yeah, I will. You, that'd be great if you would. Yeah. Um, First, I think we'll blow away some of this disgusting um, pine needles and stuff to see if we can uh, kind of clear clear the motor out a little bit because we had a lot of smoke on our initial startup. So if we can avoid that this time, that'll be good. Jerry's investigating. I think he's going to go for a ride. <laughs> Already looks better. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. It's a nice. It's a nice looking vehicle overall. <laughs> it just I'm needs surprised to hear you say good, that. It needs just a serious scrub down. Okay. Well, let's fire this thing up, and uh, you can hear it. Moment of truth. Started yesterday. <laughs> Ooh, and she's hers like a kitten. That's beautiful. So yeah, bit of a high idle issue, but again, so many of the um, of the sidekicks idle super high like that when they're cold. I don't know what that is. If there's somebody who can tell me, I would much appreciate it. I'm guessing it's something fairly simple. That doesn't sound terrible. No. Sounds better than yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And no smoke so far. No smoke so far, but it's only just, just fired up, so there won't be much heat yet. It sure would be nice if it didn't idle quite that high. I'm thinking we're about 3,500 RPM. I'll just check the tap. 
3500 and it's not like I can kick it down like a carbureted vehicle, so I don't know what to do to, to, to reduce that for now. I really don't. I'll let it warm up a little and hope that uh, that it comes way down all on its own. Whee -wee! We got a little bit of smoke now, and it stinks. Yes. So I'm guessing this is oil smoke. Um, it smells like oil smoke. Uh, like I was just saying to Judy while the camera was off. Um, you know, hopefully it's just going to burn itself off and that'll be that, but that's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario, it's leaking oil actively onto the manifold and I got to, you know, clean the engine up, find that leak and fix the leak. Um, but let's see what happens over, uh, over time here as it warms up. If we look at the exhaust, let's have a walk down here and look at the exhaust. We had a little bit of white smoke at first and we've got a little bit still, but really I'm betting this is more you can see all the water from the catalytic converter and yeah it's, it's just steam so it's running pretty smooth I'm actually pretty impressed with how this yes, thing runs yes um, idle has come down a little bit it's only been running for a few minutes but idles dropped to about 2700 so we'll see what happens with that and we're just gonna let it run here and let it smoke away I mean darn is it ever smoking <laughs> <out>? <laughs> yes yes and it burns the eyes. Yeah. The sinuses. <laughs> it's not healthy. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, we're just going to let it run here for a little bit and see what happens, but we'll get back to you. So most of this thick, acrid, horrible smoke is actually coming off of the exhaust itself. Let's have a look down here with a light. And you can see that the exhaust itself is actually smoking away really badly, quite far down. And the reason why I'm getting more smoke as the vehicle heats up is, of course, because that heat's traveling further and further down the exhaust and smoking away. But I don't think that a lot of it is coming from the engine itself. I can't see that, that there's a lot of smoke coming from the engine. So high hopes that this is going to burn off in a few minutes. I mean, it's been a few minutes already, but um, yeah, I definitely am hopeful that there's just oil on the exhaust that's going to burn off. Now, where that oil came from originally, uh, we have to question. You know, obviously there might be a really bad oil leak and it's ripping right onto the exhaust. I'm just not seeing that right now. But um, anyway, there's, there's room for hope. It's like being at a nightclub with all this fancy smoke. All right, <clears throat> first, uh, first little drive. Transmission does work well enough to drive. Uh, idle has dropped down to 2000 and uh, we'll go for a little cruise here. It's in two wheel drive right now transfer case obviously is working and away I go I don't know if my wireless mic will lose contact with the camera but hopefully you can still hear me shifts nicely drives well I'm guessing you will lose contact with me very shortly here I will go Pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to try this transfer case. Do you wanna hop in with me, my dear? Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so here we go. Now, with it idling as high as it is, I'm not sure that I want to try shifting the transfer case um, with the engine on. I might end up shift turning the, uh, the motor off, but I believe with it automatic, we just go neutral and then shift. But again, I think I'm going to shut the thing off um, and shift it just because of the high idle issue. Okay, so we're in too high. That should be four high. So let's try starting her up. Boy, it doesn't like to start. Go to four-wheel drive indicator. Okay. So let's see how it feels. Does it feel like it's in four-wheel drive? 
Oh, we have we have manual hubs on this thing, so it won't be actually in four-wheel drive now that I say that. So I will just stop and lock the hubs in. Do you want me to come out? Yeah, uh, you can stay there, my dear. The hubs turn beautifully smoothly, so I'm impressed with that. Yeah. So, do we feel any different now? If we had some very loose dirt around here, I could try to do a little burnout, and that would tell me if I was in two-wheel drive, but it's feeling yeah, fine enough. Yeah, yep, yep. So we're it's definitely in four-wheel drive. Very distinct. Definitely. Yeah, I can feel it. Okay, so now, oh, and our idle, I think, has dropped again. Let's see where we're idling at. Uh, 2,000, just over, 2,050, 2,000. So slowly it is coming down, 1,900. Okay, I don't understand why that is, but if somebody could tell me, that'd be great. I'm happy that it's coming down, though. Um, temperature's been holding pretty much the same, though, you know, for the last quite a while that the idle's been slowly dropping, so I don't think it's completely temperature-related. Anyway. And we're a bit suspicious about the fuel gauge. Yes. <laughs> it's driving very nicely with apparently no gas. And I'm going to just shut her down again and try to go into low. I probably could have shifted into four-wheel high without shutting it down, but low is a bit of a bit of a issue so it comes over up and that should be four low it's starting and stopping quite nicely well i mean it's it's, it's sluggish to start that's i don't quite know why but it's it's tough to turn over Yeah, that's low range. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're still in four wheel drive. Definitely. So it works. <laughs> so those are all good things. Now we have to find out if it will go back into two wheel drive. So let's try that in gear, or I mean with the engine running. I think that's it. But the hubs are still intact. Hubs are still locked, but the drive shaft shouldn't be turning, so we should be able to feel that we can corner more smoothly now. And indeed, we can. Yeah. Beautiful. Yay. Well, I'm very impressed. Yes. For a $900 feeder, that's not terrible. Yeah. All right. Good times. And if it's if I'm not mistaken, we might be smoking a little less. I don't notice as much smoke now, do you, my dear? Fingers crossed, no. In here, it's better. It was coming out of all of the uh, front dashboard here for a while. Yeah. And uh, there's still some smoke, but it's less. It is burning off. Yeah, we're down to 17, 1800 RPM. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's bring it inside. So it starts, it drives, the transfer case shifts smoothly, which is more than I can say for the transmission, uh, but we'll tackle that later. Uh, in the next episode, I believe we may encounter a pretty major engine issue, or we might tackle a different issue. I don't quite remember exactly, but please do come back for that. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this one. A big thumbs up to you. Take care, and we'll see you next time.